All right, tonight we're going to make some chicken pot pies. Um, it's actually very easy, don't be intimidated by it. But uh, we're gonna take you through making the filling and you can use turkey, you can use ham, you can use whatever filling you want. I just happen to have some chicken. So the first thing I've done, I've already got started a, a large onion that I've diced up, a medium green pepper, and got those in olive oil and we're sauteing those. They're just about ready for me to add in the potatoes. We have one medium, I would say medium sized potato that's been diced up. And I left the skin on and we're gonna put that in and we're gonna let that just kind of cook around. Start to get a little bit soft before we add any of the other vegetables in. But I'm gonna kind of take you through while that's cooking, take you through what we're gonna be doing. So, I did season the onions as they were sweating out. Seasoned them with the Cocoa Exchange Pod and Bean Garden Herb Blend and just cranked a few, few cranks or if you wanna do it like I do, I found a secret, I take the lid off, I blend it up in a coffee grinder, coffee bean grinder or spice grinder so that I get it a little bit smaller and that way it's already ready to go. And so I would say maybe a couple of teaspoons in as you were cooking this. We also added some salt, some sea salt to it. I'm gonna turn this down just a tad. And I think I'm actually gonna add just a little bit more oil to it. You can use olive oil, grapeseed oil, whichever you happen to have. I cook with both just because they're both good for you and healthier oils. So we're going to let that continue to cook down, lowering the heat down a little bit. Okay, let me take you through what we're going to be adding. As far as the vegetables go, what I found makes it super, super easy is to buy frozen vegetables and use whatever vegetables you like, whatever your family will eat. I've mixed it up, just whatever I either have in the freezer or whatever I happen to pick up at the store. But tonight we're going to actually add some cauliflower. We're adding the little petite green peas, have a bag of a vedli, um, veggie medley that has some carrots and some broccoli and some peas. We have green beans and then a package of, of corn. These are all 10 ounce packages. And I have the mixed veggies already out here, ready to go. And then I'm gonna be adding in some of the other vegetables. Now there's no real hard and fast rule on how much you put in. It just depends if you want to make four, six, eight of the pot pies. I actually will be using these ramekins to make the pot pies in. And we're probably going to end up with, I would estimate probably six pot pies tonight out of this. And then we freeze them so that we have them. They're ready to go. You come in, pop them out, maybe first thing in the morning and let them thaw in the fridge, pop them in the oven to, to reheat them because we're gonna cook them first tonight and then you'll have them basically ready to go. I'm also going to use a little bit of the Cocoa Exchange's Pod and Bean Roasted Pineapple and Pepper Chutney, just a little bit of that. I've got chicken broth or chicken stock actually and this is some that I had made from using my Instapot and uh, roasting, pressure cooking a chicken. We've got about, there's about two cups there. You know, we'll play it by ear. We may use all of it. We may need to add a little bit more than this. And I have four cups of diced up cooked chicken, which is probably gonna be, depending on the size of whether you're using a chicken breast or a thigh, I've used mostly thighs. And I would say maybe about four fairly large thighs. Um, you could also use the breast meat if you wanted to, but anyway, you're gonna end up with about 
four cups of the, the cooked diced chicken. So, as I said, we've got these going here. The potatoes will continue to cook once we put everything together and put it in the oven. But I'm actually going to continue to let those cook just a few minutes and then we'll start adding everything else in. All right, well, while we're continuing to kind of cook down the potatoes a little, I wanted to tell you what we're gonna do tonight for the crust. Now, a lot of times I will make my own because it's so easy to make a very quick gluten-free pie crust or even just a regular pie crust. You don't have to go gluten-free, we just are gluten-free. But tonight I'm going to use this G-Free gluten-free puff pastry and I've got them kind of laying out here to thaw and then we'll roll those out and cut them. You can also use the pie crust, the Pillsbury, you know, already ready to go and roll out pie crust. You can make biscuits and put biscuits on the top of it. I've even used the gluten-free pie crust by the two where they come like two pie crust, frozen pie crust in the freezer section and thaw those and then make it into a ball, roll that out, and then cut those the size I need. So there's a lot of options. We're just gonna be quick tonight and use these frozen um, puff pastries. Okay, so now what I wanna do, and I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in the vegetables. So we've got the 10 ounces of the corn. And you don't have to wait for these to thaw out. You can thaw them out in your microwave if you want, or you can just throw them in frozen. Kind of speeds up the process. Because they're going to cook and thaw very, very quickly. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add, there are some peas in the mixed vegetables, but I'm gonna go ahead and add some more. So again, I said we were using 10 ounce packages. Stir that around. Let's go ahead and throw these mixed vegetables in and see how we're doing here. So this is just some carrots and some broccoli. Again, as many vegetables as you want, the variety that you want. You may not like as many vegetables in it as we do, but I'm notorious for making my pot pies full of vegetables and chicken and not as much gravy. We will have some gravy in there, but not quite as much. All right, let's see. I think we'll add some green beans. Why not? Let's just add the whole one thing. This sounds like this is a pretty forgiving recipe. It is a very forgiving recipe. There just isn't a lot of measuring for this one. That's what makes it so nice and so easy. And people, I think, tend to shy away from making pot pie when they're so, so easy to do. All right, so let's let these... I think I'm going to add the chicken and maybe wait on the cauliflower. We've got an awful lot of vegetables in here. Let's kind of see how this plays out. Turn the fire up a little bit so these can start kind of thawing and as they thaw, they'll cook down. And I think I'm going to do a little bit more of the uh, layering of seasonings as we go. Got my flour there as my thickening. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the garden herb blend. And these are the seasonings that I use because I just think they add phenomenal flavor to whatever you're cooking. And as you've seen me post before, anytime you're using, and there's, there's little bits of uh, cocoa nib in this, and as you're using cocoa and chocolate in your cooking, it really, the flavonoids in the cocoa 
add so much flavor as well as health benefits. It gives you, as I said, the flavor where you're not having to add any extra salt. You don't have to add extra fat or any extra sugar when you're cooking, but you're still going to get all that wonderful flavor. I'm also going to add in tonight, as I said, we're going to use the uh, roasted pineapple and pepper chutney. And you may sit there and say, oh, I don't want to add anything sweet. It's really, it's a sweet and savory, but it's almost more savory than it is sweet. And with the pepper, it gives it just a little bit of a nice, nice kick. So that was two tablespoons. I think that's going to be plenty to add the flavor for this. And again, it has a little bit of the cocoa in it as well. But just going to give it a little bit of that something extra. And I'm telling you, if, you'll, if you make these, even if you make these for company, people are going to say, oh my goodness, this is great. They're going to think you've just slaved over it for hours when in fact it really hasn't taken that long. So I went ahead and added in the chicken. As I said, it was about four cups. So anywhere, depending on the size of your chicken thighs or chicken breast, a couple of large breasts or maybe four thighs. I've got my oven going, preheating at 350. So that's what you heard. Okay, we're gonna continue to let this cook. Then we're gonna stop, oh, man overboard there. We're going to add in, and since I'm not using a canned chicken broth or chicken stock, I'm using a homemade one, it's not going to have a lot of salt in it. So I do want to add a couple of pinches, and we use sea salt. I'm going to add a couple of pinches, pretty healthy pinches of the salt. Again, we're layering as we go. We'll give that a good stir. And we're going to add in some chicken broth. Like I said, we'll probably, and this is going to be thicker than in, than in a a can or cardboard container because this was from the pressure cooked chicken that I had made and it looks like this is really gonna soak it up so I'm gonna have to go grab go grab some more as this cooks so I will be right back with you okay Okay, so I added maybe two more, maybe even three. You just do your own judgment on how much liquid you can see, but probably about two, two and a half, maybe three more cups of broth. And for those of you who are vegetarian, don't add the meat and use vegetable broth. The vegetable broth adds wonderful flavor. Okay, so I wanted to bring it to a boil, maybe 20 minutes, depending on how high you have your heat, how quickly you want to rush it. And I'm going to add a slurry, which is a thickening. So it's a couple of tablespoons of flour. Again, I used a gluten-free flour. And I'm using coconut milk. You can use almond milk, you can use regular milk, and there's about three quarter cup of that. And that I dissolved. And so I'm gonna add that all here and we'll see how this thickens it up. If you've ever made gravy, you know you may have to add a little bit more flour to get it to thicken the way you want it. But with a high temperature, we have it under, yeah, probably under a medium high temperature, it should start to thicken up pretty quick here. Again, we're just making our sauce into more of a gravy. Let's see if there's any more of the flour I can kind of squeeze out of that. Yeah, 
Again, as I said, it's a very forgiving recipe. If you put too much flour in and it gets too thick on you, just add some more liquid to it. I don't know if you can tell that we're starting to get thick, but it's still not the consistency that I'm after. All right, well, if you can see, I got it. I added a couple more tablespoons of flour to get it to the consistency I wanted. And we we're filling up our dishes. It looks like we're going to get seven out of this. I was hoping to get eight. But I think we're only going to get, we'll just add a little here and here. I guess this is the equivalent of turning my back to the camera. Okay. All right. So we're going to bring these over to our counter. And we're going to cut our tops. I've rolled out the puff pastry or your crust, whatever you're going to use to not, uh, it might be about a quarter of an inch thick when I rolled it out. Well, let's just go ahead and cut both of these. And I'm using a ramekin as my template, and you can see just cutting around it. So it'll be about the right size for what I want. You can kind of see the thickness here. You can always press it out a little bit more and I did grease the ramekins with a little olive oil before I filled them. And then we're just going to lay our tops on. Okay. Two more. And then I'll roll out one more for our, for our last ramekin over there looks like this guy's gonna kind of tear on me which is perfectly all right okay then i'm gonna take my sharp knife and you always want to vent so i'm gonna put a little vent in it and then we're gonna pop this in the oven for about 350 at uh, 350 degrees probably gonna take about 30 minutes because everything's already hot and cooked, we're going to just heat it a little bit more and get our puff pastry to brown on the top. So we'll set our timer, and in about 30 minutes, we'll be ready to eat. Okay, well, here's the finished product, and it actually took, I would say, closer to 45 minutes at 350, but you can check yours after 30 minutes and then just kind of keep an eye on it because you don't want them to burn but anyway here is your this is a gluten-free chicken pot pie couldn't be any easier bon appetito